Okay, so I'm going to give you a brief introduction to a technique called the bootstrap method. It's a very general technique for computing confidence intervals of uh, non-trivial estimators. Okay, so background, the statistics. We're given a bunch of numbers. We want to summarize them somehow. Various ways of doing this, using graphs, histograms, or various plots. Measures of location. We want to know what the central value is. There's things like the mean, median, or mode. And then there's measures of spread, variance, standard deviation. And we want to do a kind of summary of the numbers. And also we want to do we want to do some kind of testing of experimental data against uh, theory. We want to generate a confidence interval. And that's the sort of the goal of about descriptive statistics. So here's an example. So the IQ test is an intelligent test. The test is kind of designed so the person with average intelligence scores 100. Uh, I would just say this is just a toy. The IQ test is kind of controversial. There's a book by called The Mismeasure of Man by Stephen Jay Gould who discusses some of the issues with this. Uh, it's, not, it's not totally clear you can really break intelligence down into just one number. However, let's ignore that for now. And so if you're doing, say, a study of whether playing games makes you smarter, as some people say, you might look at uh, a sample of people who play computer games a lot, measure their IQ, and then compare that IQ against a, a similar set of people who don't play computer games. If you wanted to... If you wanted to see whether playing computer games makes you smarter in some way. It's a reasonable thing to do. Okay, so this, we're just going to look at, say, some data. We're looking at some of the IQ values. So you have seven people, and the IQ is measured like this. Okay, so you get a bunch of numbers. You want to kind of summarize it. So you can compute the mean to 115. Uh, compute the standard deviation to be 33. And then if you want to start generating uh, confidence intervals, you want to get from the standard deviation to something on the error on the mean. So about 12.5, and that equals standard devia deviation divided by the square root of the number of samples. In this case, it's 7, which is roughly 12.5. And from this, we can build in to build in a confidence interval. And we want, might want to do this if we want to compare with another sample of people who don't play computer games. Okay, this is fine. But the key thing in this thing is really this square root root 7 thing, that uh, finding what the error on the mean is. And this is great. This works for the uh, error on the mean of a sample. But for other estimators, it's usually non-trivial to uh, compute confidence intervals. Okay, so if we look at the data again. Here's this fake. We have this uh, IQ data. Here are the numbers. So the mean of the data 115 is very influenced by... There's one person here who has 190. There's one little genius who snuck in of others. So remember the uh, the IQ value, if you believe IQ values, of a standard person is 100, but this is 190 person. And this is pulling away the... pulling up the mean to 115 which is a lot higher than most of the numbers. So maybe to, uh, if you worry about these outliers, is you might want to use, say, the median a bit to represent the numbers. However, that's okay. So you can represent the numbers, but then if you want to also compute a confidence interval, uh, it requires a lot more work. So in the past, when we computed the confidence interval on the error, by starting on computing the error on the mean, it's based on the law of large numbers. And maybe there's some kind of theory you can do uh, to do that, but so the goal is to to find a confidence interval on a kind of general estimator. So have a bunch of numbers and compute some formula. Okay, so one more expensive way to do it: you have n measurements, and we compute an estimator. If we want to do some statistics uh, on the uh, on the estimator, we compute say the median. We could just say, well, okay, I have seven IQ numbers, and I compute an estimate gives me one number. Okay, I'll just create another sample, find another seven people, measure their IQs. And they'll just give me the median again, and this can be two numbers. Then repeat that, say, 100 times, and then this will give me uh, uh, a bunch of numbers for the median. And from that, I can draw a histogram to compute standard deviation. Unfortunately, uh, th this is kind of expensive. So, uh, th this bootstrap technique is a, is a kind of trick almost for uh, estimating errors and confidence intervals. One way, if you have uh, these seven. I told you what you want to do is you have this sample of seven people and you want to create some new samples. One way it would be to uh, split the sample up into a three and a four, compute the median on that, and that at least give you two numbers. And uh, the bootstrap way is a, is a kind of generalization of this. Uh, and it, and uh, what it essentially does, it takes the original uh, data set and creates kind of random combinations of the random sample, uh, random combinations of the original numbers and get to give a new sample and then you compute the estimate on this new sample 
and then you repeat that a certain number of times. Typically, uh, you usually take like a thousand bootstrap samples. And this is a very general technique, it's called a, a resampling technique. Okay, so here's my IQ numbers 98, 103, 108, 190, 102, 103. So my bootstrap sample. So I want to compute the median on different samples. So essentially, I have these numbers, and then I want to create a new sample from these, and I just randomly choose. The random numbers tell me uh, my first new sample, I have 103, randomly choose 103. The next one, it shows 108, and the next one, it shows 108 again, then 103 again. And essentially, I've got seven new numbers randomly chosen. I can compute the mean, I can compute the median. And this is my one bootstrap, my first bootstrap sample. Then again, I can do it again, the random numbers. I randomly choose from each one of these numbers. The first element gives me 102. The random numbers next said, okay, it's uh, 98. And then 98 was chosen again, 103, 103, 102, 102. Just randomly choosing from a set of numbers. And then I can compute the mean again, compute the median. And you can see as each, uh, this bootstrap sample, I get a different sample and I can compute the mean and I can compute the median. And now we want to compute the complex interval. And now we've actually got some statistics. We've got a number of multiple values uh, of the median and we can compute a standard deviation on the mean and uh, that's kind of close to the number we had about 12.5 from uh, using the uh, error on the mean and compute the standard deviation some of these these numbers are actually I think there's rounding errors I don't have all the digits here uh, uh, I meant this number here uh, the standard deviation of the mean the standard deviation of these numbers it's kind of close to that maybe some rounding errors and then like, the standard deviation of the mean is taking this um, the standard deviation of these four numbers and there's probably some little rounding errors that I should have included there. Okay so so that was just with four samples you can also draw a little kind of histogram of the numbers when you do like a thousand and then if you uh, you have a thousand numbers and you do 2.7 percent of a thousand numbers at the beginning marks off here and then say 2.5 uh, 2.5 percent from a hundred percent and that region you can kind of compute a little uh, confidence interval and that that kind of confidence interval uh, from these kind of quartiles 2.5 percent to 97.5 percent would be an estimate of your 95 percent confidence interval okay so even though we don't have this law of large numbers to help us to estimate uh, what the error on the median is this bootstrap sample by taking these random samples gives us a whole bunch of numbers for different samples and from that we can kind of compute a, uh, a confidence interval Okay, so what's the recipe? We choose uh, the certain number of bootstrap samples. We generate uh, and boot. We generate new samples randomly from the original data uh, with replacement. This gives us a new sample. We measure the quantity on each bootstrap sample. And then the, the central value of the quantity which we report is estimated from the full sample, from the medium means the full sample. And then the distribution of the quantity. So we have all these, uh, the medians on. The, uh, on each bootstrap sample, and then we can uh, uh, we can do statistics on that. So if you put it in a histogram to do the 95% confidence interval, we rank the numbers, sort them numerically. Uh, so if you have a thousand numbers, we sort all the things, uh, all the numbers into uh, uh, into order. So the smallest at one, highest at a thousand, and then the numbers kind of 2.5% from the lowest number and uh, uh, 2.5 is from the highest number convert that into a number that gives you the uh, the confidence interval okay so let's look at a bit of uh, MATLAB code Oops. okay so here's, here's the MATLAB code which will be on the DLE this influences so here's our uh, data for the uh, IQs. Compute the length of the data here. Here's my 1,000 bootstrap samples. And here, this MT, I compute the median of the data. Uh, that's fine. Compute the mean of it, then print it out using the left print of data so using this, uh, this little notation here. OK, and then what we want to do is we want to loop over the number of bootstrap samples. So here's my loop over the number of bootstrap samples. I have an array to store each value of the uh, quantity for each bootstrap sample, and then I have another array to uh, th this B data is the bootstrap array. So what I'm doing here, R equals rand i one to n data, 
uh, it creates uh, an array of length n data uh, and that is made of random numbers between 1 and n data. Okay, so this gives me the random numbers between 1 and n data uh, of length n data. Uh, and then this is the way I generate my uh, bootstrap sample. Here's my bootstrap sample equals data. And then I have this uh, random numbers. So ri is a random number between 1 and n data. So it randomly chooses uh, values for each bootstrap sample. And then once I have the bootstrap sample, I compute the estimator, in this case of the median and I put it into store and then the thing loops over at the number of bootstrap samples in this case would be a thousand okay for, and for this example uh, I compute the standard deviation so this is a way of computing the standard deviation on the median what I'm going to ask you to do in the coursework is compute the 95% confidence interval and then you're going to take the uh, the store array you're going to kind of uh, run a sort routine on it to, to rank it numerically and then the uh, the numbers 2.5 percent from the uh, first element is the start of the 95 percent uh, confidence interval and the uh, the numbers 97.5 uh, percent from the lowest or minus 2.5 percent from the highest that'll give the end of the 95 percent confidence interval so you just have to write four or five line codes to compute the uh, the 95 percent confidence interval and then I, I've asked you to do a distant estimator, which I'll explain a little bit in the coursework, to compute the median. Uh, not to compute. So in the coursework, you're going to compute something called the trim mean. So you're going to replace the uh, the median called here with something called the trim mean. And here as well. And, and then that will estimate. And then well, and then there's another data set. We're not using the IQ data set. We're using something from pollution. So there's only four or five changes to the code to, to give you a bootstrap analysis. Okay, so uh, so this bootstrap technique was introduced uh, in the 1970s time by uh, uh, Efron, and the reason so it's very kind of computational. Uh, these techniques were only started being used when people have powerful enough computers uh, to do this kind of number crunching. Uh, the idea comes from uh, uh, the name comes from uh, I guess a German fable by Baron Mun Munchausen. There's also a film where the main character pulls himself and his horse out of a swamp by his hair and essentially bootstrap you pull yourself up by your uh, shoelaces and it's almost magical but I you know I want to stress it's very it's a very powerful technique because it will essentially uh, you can do a computer confidence interval of essentially the most estimators and certainly in physics when we do uh, estimates of quantities usually we estimate some numbers then it goes through a formula and we want to know the confidence interval uh, of the number coming out of the formula and you can use the bootstrap to do that and uh, also uh, the formula can actually be a running computer code so you have some numbers from some analysis either from one computer another computer code and those go input into uh, another computer program and then if you want to compute the confidence interval you kind of use this bootstrap method and that will give you a confidence interval of numbers that run through three or four different computer co programs and it gives you some kind of uh, estimate of the errors and a confidence interval if you want to compare against theory or against people doing other simulations. Okay, so just for inference, so I told you bootstrap is a form of a resampling technique. There are other techniques, uh, similar idea, one of which is called the jackknife. And the jackknife is similar, so you have a sample of uh, n data elements, x1 to xn. So instead of randomly choosing a new sample, you just uh, you generate n samples just by removing one of the samples. And then you compute the mean over the n minus 1 elements. So it's similar in spirit to the bootstrap, but it's not as doesn't include as much the same randomness, and it can be a bit cheaper than the bootstrap just computationally. And then once you have these n samples, uh, uh, these kind of uh, jackknife samples, when you remove one of the elements, there's a formula to compute the jackknife error. Uh, just using this formula. Okay, so the the way it works in the jackknife, here's the original full sample. So the whole idea of these things is to create different random samples to create new samples. And once you have additional samples, you can kind of do some statistics. So jackknife sample is zero. I just removed 98 from the full sample. And here's my new sample, 103, 108, 
190, 192, 103. It's a, it's a sample of one less element, and uh, I just uh, I lose the first element. I can compute the median. Then my Jackknife sample one. First element here is the same, and then I just don't have the 103. And this gives me a new Jackknife sample, and I can compute the median again. And uh, and you can kind of see that the median changes between different Jackknife samples. And then from that, you can kind of compute a standard deviation. And the origin of the jackknife name is it's, it's a general purpose tool, like an American knife or jackknife. You can use it to do a very general calculation of uh, confidence intervals. Okay, so in this podcast, I, I covered uh, more expansively a discussion of the bootstrap method. And I think Gosha is going to use that method in his course with as well. There's also a closely related technique called the jackknife. They're both uh, techniques known as resampling techniques. And a lot of the things you, uh, as one of my uh, collaborators in American Press used to say, just let all the computer do the work. It does just by doing this very simple bootstrap thing, you can compute the confidence intervals of uh, many different quantities.